Hi there, welcome back to the gun shop. Today we're here reviewing this, the Baikal side-by-side. -side. This particular model is a 58, though there is a few other models of side-by-side -side they do do. Uh, by now you've probably seen our tongue-in-cheek version of this review. Um, however, I feel like everything I said in that review is perfectly honest and true. Uh, these guns are not very nice. Um, however, they're not very expensive. You know, you can pick one of these up in terrible, terrible condition. Well, I've got two in a scrap pile because they're just not worth re-bluing, repairing, or whatever like that. You know, uh, this particular one in 20 ball is just over 200 pounds. In a 12 ball variant, probably about 100 pounds. They are not expensive guns. With that in mind, you have to be reserved on what quality they come out at. Firstly, let's start with the wood. Um, it's not walnut. It's one of the few gun manufacturers who don't actually use walnut in their shotgun stocks. It's beech. Sort of. It's Russian beech. It's definitely beach. And the forend is not quite grain matched to the stock, as you might imagine. They come in this delightful sort of lack of finish. Um, they just don't give you a lot. However, unlike a lot of guns, they are hand checkered. Um, that's quite interesting. And the checkering is actually not bad quality as it goes. There's a little hole in most of the stocks where they once had a sling swivel. And most of these side sides are fitted. Same on the barrel there. You have holes for sling swivels. So you can carry this over your shoulder when you're walking across the Urals hunting for capacity and woodcock and all sorts of other things that are very very prevalent in Russia. So, four inches on a lever release. Let's take the barrels off and have a little look. Uh, this particular one is a non-ejector. They do do an ejector model. Uh, however, from experience by the non-ejector it won't break. The ejector is uh, slightly more liable to, which is you know, not something you actually want. Uh, double trigger. They do do single trigger variants. Moving on to the action, it's black. Um, for those who like black action guns, we've really got a winner here. It's got a really nicely engraved bird. And on the other side, uh, there is a woodcock. Hey, that's cool. Um, it might be a spoonbill, I'm not entirely sure actually. Uh, so, the engraving, not entirely amazing. However, I would go as far as to say it's probably hand engraved. Um, you know, you wouldn't want a machine that did that, would you? You'd be sending it back in a heartbeat. All right, on a serious note, they don't look much. They cut a lot of corners with this, but they really don't break. We don't fix a lot, not because they're not worth fixing, but because they just don't really break that often. They are a simple beast. And as always with cheap engineering, they do make up for it by making everything big and strong. The quality of the metal and the quality of the components is actually not bad. They don't really wear out. Maybe that's because they don't sort of, people won't buy these and put the quantity of shots they will through a Browning or a Beretta. But that's not the point. The point in owning one of these is that you already own a Browning or Beretta. You want to own a side by side. You don't want to invest a lot of money. And you go down to your local gun shop and you go, they go, here you go, mate. This is 225 quid for a 20 ball side by side. Or here you go, mate. This is 80 quid for a side by side single trigger even a double trigger. By Bakel, so it's not gonna break, it's not horrible, it's solid, they've got a high rib, and they shoot very much like an over and under where they have the sort of Magnum style action, big beaver tail four and big chunky grips. There's nothing actually wrong with these. So, that's what's good about them. They're cheap and reliable. What's bad about them is they're cheap and ugly. However, they do shoot well, and if you drop it, you're not gonna cry. And you can use it to beat in posts and uh, use it as an oar on a boat, and it will probably put up with it. I mean, they come with a fairly wobbly stock as it is. You can't expect too much. However, you know, it's a shotgun. In the simplest of forms, they are two steel tubes with, with a bit of wood to hold on to, and this is about as simple as they come. They haven't tried to make it refined, and you end up with a lot of sort of the Spanish guns trying to be something they're not, and they're actually just made out of metal that might as well be butter, whereas these, all they are is a utilitarian thing. They are the AK-47 of the shotgun world. What more is there to say? Not a lot. They're great. Buy one, stick it in the cabinet, never use it, but say you've owned one. It's a bit like owning an Alfa Romeo as a car lover. You kind of have to own a bicycle at some point. Just to say that, yeah, I used a bicycle um, and I was climbing a mountain I used it as a crutch. Or um, I accidentally tripped and used it, it saved my life. Or you can walk around a shoot dragging it behind you and everyone will find it the funniest joke of the year if they haven't seen it before and all you've done is lost no money at all. On that note, actually Baikal, well done, you do fill a hole in the market. My problem nowadays is that your new guns from Baikal are actually in this country a little more expensive than they really probably should be. However, the second hand market is not strong, there's a lot about, and they don't cost a lot of money. 
buy one, enjoy it, play with it, abuse it, abuse it as much as you like, you're not going to lose out. That's all I have to say. Enjoy your bicycle.